Thank you to all my patrons who supported me throughout my whole YouTube journey. Hey guys, I'm TADDY. I don't know, but today we are here with Distractable. We're gonna continue playing some Jedi Survivor and trying to complete the game. I've not yet seen Boba Fett, so um, I'm currently ser like searching these mines. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the bar to see if there's any more side missions to do on Kobo. So now I'll go somewhere else, but we're gonna listen to Distractable, and today's episode is Bob wins this episode. He has been having a really bad losing streak, and nothing has been quote-unquote fair in a long time, so how is he gonna win this? That's my question, but we're gonna get it answered. Good evening, gentle listener, evening. and welcome to Distractable. Thank you. This week, the scales are finally rebalanced because of Reddit outcry. Oh, Mark Reddit. wants to talk about lenses and his rarer toys with the boys. Bountiful Bob opines about clamping, mounting, and loose ball joints. And Wade has no gag reflex due to his huge engorged dangler. From sleep apnea to loving perfect cables. Yes, it's time for... Bob wins this episode. About time. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome Hello. back to Distractable. Thank you so much for being a loyal listener. Thank you for following up with us on our subreddit and all the wonderful call-outs that you had about me and Bob's apparent injustice in our delivery of judgment in this episode. We, how, how are you not on Bob's side? How are you still defending Wade? How is this possible? This doesn't make any sense. No, you know what, Mark? I've been I've been spending a lot of time looking at the subreddit and really thinking about what we did, yet. and I think they're right. Uh, I think Wade uh, Wade just really gets mistreated. He does not get his just desserts uh, in the context of this podcast. Wade, um, yeah. okay. Wade's never done anything wrong. It's tough being a fan favorite. It, it despite how relentlessly funny and intelligent and consistently prepared he is. Uh, uh, you and I are just very mean-spirited, bad friends. I think we owe Wade a very heartfelt apology for the way that we've treated him since he existed. Okay, uh, but are we going to do that? No, no. No, not at all, not at all. Why all would right, we do yeah, that? That's fair. That's fair. Uh, anyway, so we are back again with another episode where unfortunately Bob was not the winner. I think he's on a six or seven episode losing streak. That's like ten. Right. <clears throat> It's like, um, it's like a dozen. It's like a year and a half. It's really killing my motivation to focus up and work hard, so I'm going to eat a sandwich while we do this one, okay? Let's do a quick Rorschach test, Bob. What do you see when you look at this? Sadness. <laughs> Sadness. <laughs> Misery. Agony. Suffering. What about this side? <laughs> the deep ache of knowing that the entire universe I was looking at Bob. is leading only to a reassimilation of every bit of energy and matter back into the black hole at the absolute center of existence that will be. And it's the only thing that we have to count on. It's the only thing you can be certain of, that you will die and you will be sent back to the universe, dust to dust. Mm -hmm. It's a good sandwich I got here, though. That's absolutely correct, Bob. You get a point. Wow. Mm. I'm on my I'm on my game today. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know we were in the point part yet. That's a point. Oh, Wade, criticizing the judge. Negative one points. All right. We're off to a fair, fair, fair start to this episode. Oh, no, I don't like the way this is going. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Wade. Are you figuring something out about what's oh, yeah, about to happen? I think I'm figuring something out. That's funny. Did you have some sort of realization just now? <laughs> I do. I think this is going to be an incredibly fair episode. I can't wait for mm. it. All right, you are correct about that, but unfortunately, we're not in the point of signing round just yet. We're here. In small I get it. Pod. I understand. <laughs> so, how are you boys doing today? I'm good. I'm doing good. You know, I I feel like I've come to peace with my my role on the podcast now. And um, you know, when you when you set your when you set your expectations accordingly, it's hard to be disappointed. Uh, expect nothing, and then when you get nothing. Hard, you can't be upset. You know, you knew you knew what was gonna happen. Uh, the baby's good. He's yeah. doing good. Oh, possibly the second time ever. Positive baby update. He's a cute little man. 
Oh. He's uh, he's making more noises now. He's blowing blow bubbles with his Aww. mouth, working his way towards getting the mmm sound going. Not subtly at all. I tried to encourage him to make his first word mama. Aww. If his first word is dada or fuck, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, know if that's redeemable. I don't know if there's coming back from that. I think that puts a permanent schism in between uh, Mandy and my relationship. And so I really hope, really banking on him getting Mama out first. That's oh, you goal. should get Wade or Mark so you know he'll be a winner. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, oh, Wade, that's horrible for you to say. No, no, negative one points for Wade. All right. I can't believe that you no, would say man. something uh, like that. That's uh, bad luck, Wade. Bad luck. Uh, but, Bob, I just wanted to say, like, positive one point for having a great uh, turn of events with the baby. I think uh, having yes. the first good baby update is worthy of a point. And congratulations, Bob. You, oh, you earned that. Very fair of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for that. Wade, how are you? I'm doing very well. WRONG! Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I should have let you get a whole sentence out Man, first, sorry. that was sorry. mean, but just... really funny, Bob. I hope you get a point for that. <laughs> oh, that was really... <laughs> no, no, oh, yeah. no, no, we're not in the point of signing around just yet. Molly and I are in the process of, uh, of moving, which I think we kind of made public knowledge recently. And I have discovered that it sucks. <laughs> you didn't remember that moving sucks? It was so bad the last time I blocked it out. So now that I'm reliving it, it's like opening a full body size brain covered scab and then itching at the open remaining just exposed muscle and flesh. It's awful and I hate it. And I'm probably slightly exaggerating. Yeah, that's a little much. You got, you're moving to a new house. The house is beautiful. I've seen pictures. It looks nice. It will be. And it will not be a drowned man sequel. <laughs> what did you just do with your foot there? I you, tapped were you on trying some to wood. knock on wood? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, but I have corkboard flooring. Does cork count as wood? Mm. Mm. Cork comes from a tree? What is cork? Ah, uh, although cork is not wood, it is a dead oh. tissue which makes it an inert substance. I don't know why that was the... I got cardboard, thing. hang on. All right, so Wade, unfortunately, you did not knock on wood. I'm going to have to knock a point off for that. Uh, so uh, off to a poor start, but I know you'll catch it up soon, Wade. It's such a fair episode. You've always got a chance, Wade. There's no way you could lose, like, repeated 50-50 chances over and over and over again and end up not winning episodes for weeks at a time. No, I don't think that luck could do that to me. I think only Hostein intervention can do it. Devost intervention? Host. Mark, are you some sort of cow host? Hmm, I don't know, I feel Post insulted. Dine. I don't know if I should take that lying down. You bovinal milk-making host. I yes. do want to say, I do want to say, I saw on, some, on the subreddit a couple people were talking about like, I don't think Mark knows what fair means. Fair doesn't... <laughs> Look, he, he, I think he does know what fair means. But fair and equitable are not the same thing. The mm. fact that I lost a bunch in a row in a thing that Mark had no no hand in swaying the outcome. I was just doing a bit when I said Amy was suspended above the camera, dropping the thing in the correct orientation. I don't think that that happened. A small part of me thinks that might have happened. But I don't actually think that that happened. But maybe. But we'll find out when the recordings are released later on. But, like, Mark, it is fair. The fact that I just happen to have lost a bunch of, like, even chance coin flips over and over and over repeatedly, over and 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 over again. Can't forget about And the wheel, which was which was preset odds, no changing, no swaying, no influencing. It was actually a fair chance that I could have won. I just didn't. Yeah, I mean, it was fair. I literally was trying my best to showcase that it was I was not influencing anything there, but it just. No, I remember. I remember, draw. Mark. We saw the whole. We saw the. It fair. This is the symbol of fairness. It's an international <laughs> sign language symbol of fairness. If you're not watching on Spotify, you don't know the international symbol of fairness here. Which, uh, I, I'm glad that it's universal and I really well hope that's not- I'm sure there's someone out there right now in some specific region of the world who's like, Oh! That's worse than the middle finger in our culture! <laughs> like, oh, blur, blur that out, Will. Blur, I don't know. I, 
I, oh, I'm yeah, constantly absolutely. surprised by how little I know about the world and things I'll say or do something and someone's like, you know, that's actually a racial slur. And it's like, ha! No, I didn't know that! I remember in Shakespeare, <laughs> if you bite your thumb when you're looking at someone, that's like an insult to them, right? I mean, that feels very insulting. To me, I would do it like angrily. I'd bite down too hard. I'd probably hurt my thumb, so I wouldn't want to do that anyway. I'll try it. Try it. Let me see. Let me see if I feel insulted. Oh! Minus one point! How could you insult the judge like that, Wade? What a dick move! This isn't Wade, not Mark. How? Because it does kind of hurt a little bit, yeah. Uh, the point hurts worse, but the thumb bite did hurt. You, you don't want to bite on the, the base of the nail. I feel like you want to go further and bite on the skin. I think that was my mistake. Yeah, I don't know how deep you want to put it. Maybe you want to, like, thumb your, the deep part of your throat, like, get all the way back in your uvula. Mm, I don't know if you need to thumb the deep part of your throat. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, say you Mark, try it. Try it, Mark. Oh, try it, Mom. Yeah, I'm good. All right, I'm, Mark. I'm all right. Uh, please, everyone, don't go to Spotify and watch Dude, the video. Dude, I can this fondle a... my uvula with the tip of my thumb. Oh, I hate that word. <laughs> what? This is not a discussion I thought we'd ever have, but do you not have a gag reflex? I think I do, but I'm not, not for myself. <laughs> I know said. that I do, and I know that my gag reflex kicks in way before <laughs> I'm fondling my own uvula, that's for sure. To be fair, I've had it swell up on me three times this year, so I think I'm just used to choking on my uvula now. So, so are you, honest to God, you were like touching the little dangly, the uvula in the back? Kind of. It might be just short of it. I don't know. Well, let me tell you, your life changes when you have to go 24 hours with your uvula being the size of your thumb and flopping around your mouth. It changes your outlook on things. No, that does sound pretty horrendous. It's happened three times this year! Sounds like something that would happen in a cartoon. It doesn't sound like a real thing that would happen to a real person, so... Dude, you would cough and it would pop out and lay on your tongue. It was what? terrible. <laughs> I'm deducting points, and I feel like that's very fair. I'm deducting points from Wade for making. I had to live it. I'm sorry you have the inconvenience of having to hear about it. I lived it. <laughs> how are you? How is the? What are you? What is dangling out of your mouth? I don't want to know. Don't answer that question. You know what the uvula is? It's not out of how my mouth. How is your uvula reaching all the way out of your mouth? It swelled up. It swelled up, Mark. There's no way. There's Google no it. way. You're he straight up texted us about enough. this. To where it was down my throat, I coughed, it popped up and the, could partially lay on the back of my tongue. I am not okay with any of this. You said dangling out of your mouth. No, not out of my mouth. It was not out of my mouth. It was down my throat, coughed, and it came up and laid on the back of my tongue. Not like up here, but like on the back of my tongue. Like you could feel it. You could That's feel it. That's more than enough for it to be horrific. Yes. And if I opened my mouth all the way, ah. Uh... You couldn't see the tip of it because it was down far enough to be, like, in my throat. That sounds like some weird kind of non-real torture technique or something. I don't... I've got pictures. You guys want to see it? No. Kinda? No, I don't. I don't want to see it, but I also am, dead, like, terribly curious. When was that? What? How good of a picture did you get of this? Uh, is, it with, is it just, like, cell phone pictures? I don't... You can't see the, like, it looks like that's the tip, but that's just the shadowing. It actually goes deeper than that. It's so long and wide. Yes. That was so horrible. That was actually after, I think I took, I don't know what time of day that was, but that was after I had gone to the doctor, gotten injected with a steroid, and then gone, gotten medication, went back. So that was after the swelling had gone down some. And I found uh, getting, like, ice chips. And just like letting ice chips sit in the back of my throat or ice cubes and stuff. It's hard when you have a bit of a gag reflex, but like just having to let that stuff sit in the back of your throat helps the swelling a little bit. And I had to gargle salt water every hour for like 12 hours. I hate that that's a thing the doctors tell you to do. For Gargling salt water is gross. And any, even the tiniest bit of salt water getting in my mouth makes me immediately want to throw up. I don't know what causes this. And it's happened to me three times this year. I had never experienced it in my life. You are... I'm, I wish we had been on tour when that happened, because then you'd have quite the legacy. It was hard to talk. It's like you're, it's like you're choking when you're trying to talk, so it's like talking like this because you can't get a full range of motion out. You... Okay, so you texted about this and said that this was a thing, but I feel like you undersold it when you described it. It was one of the worst things I've ever gone through because it was like always feeling like you're choking on something. And I had to... I woke up like that, and I had to try to go to sleep the next night still dealing with it because it hadn't gone away yet. Well, you just sleep on your face and you let your uvula dangle forward. 
And then that way it's not in your throat, it's just kind of in the back of your mouth. You know, he's right. I think sleeping on my back is part of what caused it. So I wonder if I have like sleep apnea or something and it's so severe, like it causes that. I don't know. You might, I have no idea. I have very severe sleep apnea. I have never had whatever the fuck that thing is that's happening to your uvula, so I don't know. Maybe someone out there watching or listening will have some ideas. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't think, think so. I... I don't know. Who do you go to My in e like, I don't know. Who specializes in uvulas? Ear, uh, nose, and throat. I feel like it would be part of that. Yeah. Unless you go to the doctor and you're like, oh no. We don't do uvulas. You've got to see the guy. Here's his card. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got uvulitis. Might be a thing. That's probably a thing. That sounds like a thing. Uvulite. I mean, I just. Well, you can't just remove a uvula too. I googled that because I was like, I just get this thing taken out. Apparently, it helps with stuff. Isn't that what they used to do? Isn't that the treatment they used to do for snoring before like CPAP Maybe. machines and all this stuff existed? But this is kind of an important little dangly. I swear there was a surgery where it was like, we'll just laser that uvula right off there. You'll stop snoring. No more uvulas for you. Man, I'm not a doctor. Let me Google it. I, this has been. It helps prevent food and liquid from going up your nose when you swallow it. it seems like. A bad way to accomplish that goal. I feel like a, a, there could be a different design to that element of the throat. I gotta be honest. It's like the little cap in the top of your toilet bowl when you flush, it like lifts up to let the water out, then closes back. You go to swallow, and it closes the breathe hole in your nose. <laughs> it's like one of those, uh, those one of Japanese sodas with the marble in the top. Ah, <laughs> when you go to take a about. sip, the little marble rolls out of the way, but then you set it down, and the marble closes it. Ah, that's a soda uvula. Okay, well, good to know. So, Duvula. So that is all for small talk. <laughs> I feel like I should have deducted way more points from Wade, but I won't out of fairness. I hope nobody was eating, drinking, or driving whenever they uh, looked at the image I showed. One hand a drink, one hand a sandwich, knees on the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Third arm posting on the subreddit. Oh, I shouldn't have been driving while listening to, oh no. <laughs> Actual car crash. Yeah, hilarious as we all know. <laughs> Today's episode is called Toys for the Boys. Toys um, for the Boys. But it also could be, it, it, I, I don't know, it just like rhymed to me. I wanted an opportunity for us to talk about all the funky purchases, the cool gadgets, the tech stuff, us to have a chance to gush about the latest gizmo or whatnot. And, and I don't mean to like make the title sexist. This is like applies to anybody, but we're we boys. We are the boys, but anyone can have toys. Yeah, exactly. So any kind of uh, gizmo and stuff that you guys want in your life uh, that you could get that is niche. I'm looking for like something that is so niche that not many people would appreciate it, but it's something you've purchased recently, or it could be in the past few months, or as you got over Christmas, I don't care what. Just an opportunity to gush about it. Um, I'm going to start it off, okay. Okay. because uh, I just got back from filming my movie, and I've been uh, getting a lot of, you know, trying to build out my own film kit to do this, and I'm not going to talk about the thing that I just bought earlier. I'm going to talk about, uh, it's so bizarrely obscure and it won't it doesn't even mean a lot to even other filmmakers well it, they know what it means i'm not saying it's like so extremely uh niche that they wouldn't know what it is but just because of the type of filming that i was doing in uh in this movie if i had known that these lenses existed i would have been in such a better position to get more shots and so what i bought was a set of cinema macro lenses okay hmm. cinema lenses people probably know what they are they could figure that that out um they're just lenses that you know they're a very nice glass very nice glass that's and basically what it is but this was a a three lens set. They actually have four lenses in the set, and I hope to get the other one soon. I actually reached out to the company that made it, being like, I would love to get <laughs> my hands on this stuff. And they said, uh, well, it's new, and we don't even have any of it. And I'm like, I never pull the, oh, well, I, I have a channel I could pay you an exposure, because I always like to pay for uh, it. Markiplier. <laughs> I can, <clears throat> I, I'll talk about you on my podcast if you, um, <clears throat> Yeah, but they're macro lenses. So you, you can get macro lenses, and what macro lenses means is that it has the ability to have such a close focus that you can focus on something that is just an 
inch away and you can see it in incredible detail. If you've ever seen a shot of a movie that's like you look up on something and you can see the grain in like the wood, you can see it's almost like a microscope, but for for cinema and it's like the ability to have a cinema lens that can shoot movie quality stuff that's able to go all the way up here and then you know rack focus to the distant subject and still retain like the it quality of image that has it it's very niche and its utility is very limited but it's one of those things that is like i'm very excited about it because it opens up a tiny little window into a new world that I can like use and intermix with other other shots because there is a difference between when you have high quality glass and low quality glass um, and having a set of like different focal lengths in it just makes me very excited. I think I know what this is, but just to, for anyone listening who might be uh, in my camp, macro, so you're saying it has very close focal length. These are like the lenses where the camera has like a really long and skinny snoot. No, that's a probe lens, which I also oh, love. These okay. are actual okay, okay. regular lenses. The thing about that is, the fun thing is, a probe lens, we used it on the last one because it's fun for very useful shots, but it has a, a, a maximum aperture of T14. So if you know lenses at all, that's, that's not a very, very open. It's yeah, a narrow tight, right? aperture. So not a lot of light gets through. You need a lot more light. These are T2.8 cinema lenses, 24 oh. millimeter. 32 oh. millimeter, 65 millimeter, and 90 millimeter, mi millimeter focal lengths. And it's like, you have a full range. You can get from wide to long. And it's like, you, oh, it's just very exciting. I don't know if you know this, and I don't want to like ruin your excitement about this, but do you know why, what, how does that work then? So I'm assuming these basically look like normal lenses, right? They're maybe a little yes. stubby or something. Why is a macro lens a macro lens if it looks the same as a 35 millimeter, you know, prime cinema lens? It's not macro. Is it like the shape of the lens or is it like the length of stuff inside? Because the lens is basically there's an outer lens and then there's a second lens and you move them in relation to each other. And that's like how you pull focus, right? Yeah. So that internally, that. yeah, with a cinema lens, uh, internally, it's focus uh, glass elements move inside and they they shift around and Ideally, when you have a high quality cinema lens, they don't move so much that there's what's called focal breathing. Uh, there's not too much of that, where when you, when you focus in real close th and you focus to far away, things don't shift in size too much, so it doesn't have a zoom element. Getting right. that kind of like really honing in on those particular factors require extremely precise uh, engineering of both the glass and the elements inside it. And what makes this different is like to get a focal length where you, or a, a minimum focus of like an inch uh, is, is difficult while also being able to use it as a normal cinema lens. It just opens up a, this latitude and having it in like a, say a 24 millimeter, which is a wide lens, um, being able to get close and wide and then also having a 32 and a 65, which are more normal uh, medium, you know, lenses. And then you have your 90 and it's like for your longer shots. It's just like it, it's very niche, but it opens up a latitude of filmmaking that I particularly like going from something extremely close and then racking all the way to the distance to see something in, uh, in response to whatever you're looking up up close. It's like, I like that. It's very fun. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Obviously, this is, I haven't even gotten this toy yet, but I want to hear about things like that. It doesn't have to be in any, like, <laughs> cinema or stuff like that. It's like, whatever you've got or bought, I want to hear about it. I do have something, and it's a little weird. Maybe it's I not. Have a I have that I really like that I bought for myself. For, like, all my video stuff. It, uh, it's only it AX supports the camera like way better than mine. And uh, it's sitting on a, up, like a tri mount. Uh, and in order to get the height I want to, and to do the things I want, the mount was just not quite now there for this record, desk. This is an uplift, so I can kind of adjust it. And to get like comfort whenever I got like a new chair, I had to slightly adjust the camera more. And I wanted to be able to like turn sideways, tilt. So I bought a combination of like these little round, I don't even know what they're called at this point, because I bought these a little while back now. Uh, but I've got like these little like different plates, nuts and bolts and things, and I've just been like D nuts. Yeah, I love D nuts. If you know what they are better than I do, sure. He's got. I got a bag of D nuts right here. Yeah, D these are my ussy D nuts. Getting a variety of things to like extend the mount and allow my camera to actually fully turn. So the camera, the mount itself, I probably just need to get a new mount. But it has like a ball joint and then like the camera can slide in on top of the ball joint but it has limited mobility with that so i bought these things so that it can turn it can bend 
I've got a variety of, some of, like the ones I'm actually using are on it. These were ones that didn't quite fit or work out. That's why they're sitting on my desk. So I bought a variety of things I didn't know exactly what I needed. So I don't know what the hell this thing is called, but I bought like three different shapes and size of these little like... It looks like a little spacer, like a little, just like eighth inch, you know. Didn't even know they existed until I just had to look for them. Cause I was like, camcorder mount, not do what need, how I make better. And uh, I came across a whole oh bunch of stuff. God. I relate to that so hard. Dude, I don't know shit about camera stuff. Every time I need to look for something, I'm like, I need a mount for my camera that clamps on to a two inch bar. But, and then you, like, I'll spend a day Googling and then you get there and it's like, oh, well, that's just like a C clamp with a double jointed arm articulated mount. Obviously it's like, Oh, wow, why would I oh, yeah, that Google was the other thing. The, the screw was too wide for the camcorder. So I had to get one with like a wider base that had a narrower top so I could put that on the base and then actually put the camcorder on that, which was another thing I needed. Speaking for toys for the boys, I gotta go get a delivery. I'm so oh, sorry. my sweet. I'm gonna eat my sandwich. Right now. All oh, right, Mark's getting some toys for his boy. He's so much more excited for those than he is to talk to us. Go on, I'm listening. Oh, well, I, I feel like it's slightly less... I mean, not that it was that interesting to begin with, but it feels like a niche thing that most people probably don't look for. No, I I do. I agree. It's like a it's like a content creator thing, right? Yeah. There's been so much shit where I'm like, I need, I just need a want, I need like a bar thing that can hold up that has the. And it's like I don't know the words for this shit. I'm not a camera person. I'm not a. No, I'm, I'm not, a tech yeah, person. Exactly. I can do computer stuff, but I don't know anything like lighting and all that. And yeah, no, I've there. I've had so many times where I'm like, camera turn. Camera mount, 360, flexible, but, and you find, you know, you find like all the wrong shit and eventually you find exactly the thing is like, oh, that did exist. It just has a very specific name that I did not know. And I would never have guessed. Like D-nuts. Yeah, is that, that's what these are? I, I think so. This is what, they're little nuts that have little rings yeah. on them. So you can, I think they're called, oh, oh, you have like mail to mail adapters. Oh no, yeah. When I bought this camcorder, it literally came uh -huh. with this mount as like part of a package, right? Like you can get it and it's like, oh, we'll bundle these together. Is it like a thing that clamps onto your desk or something? Why is it not just like a tripod? No, it's a full tripod. And whenever I bundled it up with the camcorder when I got it all, this was like the recommended one to get with it. I was like, okay, perfect. And I got it. And like I said, the screw sticking out of the tripod was too wide for the camera. And I was like, why was this bundled? I couldn't put it on the I, clamp. Like it's put, it's put on a clamp and that, I, I call it a clamp. You have to screw it onto this thing, this plate. There's a base plate you screw onto the camera and the camera slides into a mount. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it didn't yeah. fit on the plate because the plate screw was too wide. And I was like, why was this recommended? And what do I do to fix it? I would bet some amount of money that the, the, pot, the tripod that you got came with multiple screws that you could switch out the screw that's at the base plate for the correct screw. Cause your cam, it sounds like your camcorder uses a totally common, I think it's an eighth inch, uh, like screw. I don't remember at this point. I bought these like literally a year, two years ago. I don't know why you had a tripod that had some weird non-standard tripod screw thing it, but I'm sure, I mean, it sounds like you got it to work. So that's what's really important. And now it's a lot more flexible too. Cause the ball joint is good, but the ball joint doesn't allow you to have it level and like spin sideways. How is the ball joint not flexible, but it, is it, uh, you know what? This is not an important thing. I'm just surprised that a, a tripod with a ball joint is not flexible enough for your knees. I think my concern was that because I wanted to be able to move it on the go, I wanted to be able to spin it without risking the ball like rotating a little bit. If it was loose enough to turn, it was loose enough to lean. And I didn't want it to go sideways or up and down. I just wanted it to turn. So I wanted to keep the ball joint locked in place so that way I could do, cause we were trying to like make a parody video or whatever years ago. And one of the shots I wanted to do involved literally just like grabbing the handle and turning the camera, like spinning it. But I wanted to keep the plane level as it like panned around and the ball yeah. joint, it kind of like wiggles and wobbles a little bit. So this way that part's level and I can spin it without changing the like the even plane if that makes sense holy jesus what the fuck what a what a boy well, toy well, well. that is look at this boy toy <sighs> hello hi hey. how'd your delivery how's your package delivery go we were just talking shop uh it's good wait we talked the whole time you were gone bud 
Yeah, we talked a lot. We talked about a wide range of things. You don't have to worry about it. It's not about you. All right. I don't know why you're, you're suspicious. We, I, we, I know before we've done like handshake agreements. Yeah, but we were hosting those. You're, we're, you're the host here. We and did fine. not do that this time while you were gone. Right, okay. we, it's on video, and I'm sure you'll check after the fact. You can see we didn't do that. Did you like my discussion, though, Mark, that you weren't here for about my, my connectors? Yeah, no, I, I do appreciate that. Yeah, going into this world, it's actually funny. I got some fun toys, but then I got this thing, which is a 10 hard drive docking bay, so I can Ooh. make a new RAID array that'll allow me to actually edit video on my PC. I am very out of shape. I need to get back into running. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been to your house. It's not, you don't even have stairs. It's all one floor. I, you okay? I have two flights I have to deal with. Two! It sounds like you just ran a, ran a quite a distance or something. What? I did, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. I, okay. I feel good. And then other toys came. That was great first round. Bob didn't go yet. <laughs> oh, I, Bob. I, <laughs> I want to I go in a different direction. I want to talk. I was about to assign Bob points right away. I was, I was sure that he I had mean, that I mean, you one. can give me points before I talk if you want. But, but I got um, this. No, uh, first round over. I think Bob took that round. Uh, one point oh, wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. Bob, what's your start off second round? All right. Can I? This is not as tech-y in terms of the technology of the thing. But can I talk a little bit about how I am about phone cases? Oh, man, that's so brave. 30 points, Bob. So yeah. brave. No, look, listen. <laughs> phone cases are tricky, right? Okay, I am I am not of the school. I know there are people who are like, just keep your phone naked. That's how they designed it. That's how it's supposed to be. I like my phone to not have a broken screen. There is glass on the front and back of modern phones. I like it. Like, I, I baby my phone. I don't throw it around. I don't do... I, it still... It falls sometimes. It falls. I don't want a broken phone. I cannot find a phone case that satisfies my exact needs. And I can tell you in specific detail what's wrong with every phone case I've ever owned. And I don't know why no one has ever made the correct phone case. So, like, this one. This, this is a mouse phone case. Not sponsored. Not affiliated. I bought it with my own money. It's a great phone case. I like the look of it. It's got a walnut wood insert on the back. It's too thick. It has a lot of features I like and offers a lot of protection, but this lip here is too thick. If you're trying to touch the edge of the screen, and it's like, this is like millimeters of difference, right? But I, I've i had this cell phone. This is an iPhone 13 something, big pro something, um, pro max, whatever. I've had this phone for like a year and a half. I think I own nine phone cases for it. I probably, by the time I'm done owning this phone, I will spend as much or more money on phone cases for the phone as i did on the phone itself because i look online i'm constantly looking at like direct from manufacturers in like china ordering on you know like like aliexpress type websites and stuff and looking and this mouse is a pretty big popular brand of case they make all kinds of stuff i'm why is it so hard to make the right phone case why is the lip so thick why are the buttons not right? This case has my second favorite kind of exterior case buttons, where there's cutouts. It's rubber, but there's cutouts, so it's pretty soft. Why can't you make built-in buttons that work good? The only thing that Apple's phone cases do correctly is that they have really nice milled aluminum buttons that are built into the case, so when you push the button, you get the tactile feedback of the button physically moving. This is a dangerous mark, because I'm really passionate about this, but no one fucking cares two seconds no, how I feel about cell phone that's cases. What this, that's what this episode is about, for us to start caring Okay, about good, these good. things. But yeah, like, so so I own a case, one of my other favorite cases that I have, the other thing with the new generation of phones is MagSafe, right? I have right here on my desk. MagSafe is a brilliant idea. It just magnets, you can have little pop sockets, you can have chargers. Why are all the cases that have the correct features not MagSafe? How hard is it to make a MagSafe case? I can, I have cases that are four millimeters thin that have MagSafe built into them that totally work, but they're four millimeters thin and they don't have the right features. It's just, it's frustrating. So I literally, I think I own nine or possibly 10 phone cases ranging all the way from a bumper that just wraps around the exterior edge of the phone to a carbon, a pressed carbon fiber weave case that's like the minimal thickness to be a case, but offers you know, very little in terms of features. I have the whole gambit. None Can of them I... satisfies me. I change my phone case on a daily basis, and it drives me insane. 
Why am I obsessed with this? Can I offer a phone case that I don't know if you've heard of before? It may not be perfect for what you're talking about, but it's... Uh, you know me. I was, a, I was a naked phone guy, right? You were, yeah. But you may have noticed I have a case on my phone. Which is weird. It is weird that it, I've been a naked phone guy for the longest time. I didn't give a shit about cases because I was like, it just makes it too bulky. And it's not like this case is not bulky. Is that a quad lock? Have you heard of quad lock? <laughs> have I? <laughs> have, have I heard of quad lock? But you held it on screen for half a second and my brain was like, that's a quad lock. That's a quad lock interface on the back of that case. That's a quad lock black matte plastic case. I've seen that one. I don't uh, actually own a quad lock case because I own a peak design case. And the uh, peak design case has a really nice heather fabric finish to it, but it's a similar docking mechanism between the peak ecosystem and the quad lock ecosystem but i uh -huh. do like the quad locks what are what's your favorite what are your favorite features about the quad lock mark so my i started riding a bike right and i mm -hmm. don't have the other case I, I got this case starting about like a year ago and i was looking for a good bike mount and a lot of them were like oh you mm -hmm. you open it up you clasp it down and it holds it and i was like that didn't feel very secure or they have like rubber bands that you exactly strap, and i, was like, and I hate if, those yeah if i'm biking and i'm going fast like i i worry about the vibrations knocking it loose and then i looked up like good bike and i found this is not sponsored by the way again this whole episode is not sponsored by any no, of these are sponsorships just an opportunity for us to gush you'll know when we're sponsored oh yeah you'll know we'll do a very terrible job <laughs> <laughs> and you'll buy it up to make us look good exactly but quad lock they in the newest version of it they used to have a bump where it was actually fat and sticking out like this and i didn't like it as much and then in the latest version they actually came out with uh, a flat profile and then indented here is Interesting. the interface. It looks like it has a MagSafe ring as well. Is that also it MagSafe? Does. Yes. It's got now got also a magnetic ring that can magnetically charge as well. So they have a car mount with a USB attachment and it can, it can charge. It works for the bike mount too. So not only did they make it smaller, I think they also leveraged some of the MagSafe properties to make like a magnetic attachment to it. I don't know how well that works. I don't use that accessories. I just use the actual uh, clip in because I feel like that's thing but I know they do make like just a magnetic one that goes in the end end but also magnetically attaches to the outer and it does add bulk but I've been able to look over all that because of the convenience of this. There's an armband version you can have and you can clip on when you run. There's like yeah. your car version. Like again, not sponsored. The quad lock, the quad lock mount universe is really good. They have they have like adhesive ones you can just stick on a wall or something. They have like magnetic ones, I believe, that you can so you can put on like your fridge or whatever. And then quad quad lock is good. Their ecosystem is good. I have not seen this new version of the case because they they have always had that bump on the back. But I will. I want to ask. How are the how are the buttons handled? It looks like they're solid silicon across the buttons, but they have like cutouts around them or something. How? Yeah. Uh, so the buttons like they still have all the tactile feel of the click of the button. So I I I definitely feel the click. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's pretty good actually. Yeah, it's not like where it's that weird rubber softness. It does feel like an actual button again, which is like important to me. I heard a rumor that they were going to take away the power button on like a future version. And on I'm the like, iPhone? No! Yeah. How do you turn it on? Do you... Hey, turn it on! Hey Siri, be a phone! <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna be a haptic touch, and I'm like, oh, come oh, on, man. no, gross, awful. No, that's not good. So anyway, no, I get, I get the gush about phone cases, but that's okay. That's well, cool. so now I have to buy that. So, <laughs> thanks. Um, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. I'll say. No, that. I know. It's well, that's the cheap. thing, right? So I own. So this is not a cheap case. I own a lot of cheap ones. It's there's a lot of like bulk manufactured ones that are you know made in China and other locations where it's like ten bucks and you get it shipped and it's a phone. But I own several, this is like a $50 phone case. I own a Peak Design case for my phone that's like a 60 baby yeah. dollar phone case. I have an app, I have an Apple branded one. I have one of the um, leather ones. Honestly, the Apple case is, is so close to being right, except Apple insists on aesthetics over functionality and they just ruin it by being douchebags. I have a quad lock versus Peak Design update. I oh, yeah? quad lock. And uh -huh. the first thing, the first response is a sponsored post 
from Peak Design, whose title reads, Quadlock wishes it was this. Don't buy an ugly phone case. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. that's the thing. No, well, yeah, that's the thing, right? Quad Quadlock is like, the, it's not like a cool design brand, but Peak, that's the thing, that's, I feel like, a, a downfall of Peak. You have, you've always, you've used Peak uh, bags for a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. very cool. They look awesome, and they are functional. But Peak has falls into that same thing that Apple does sometimes, where it's like they get more focused on it being aesthetically cool and like functionally interesting, and you lose some of the actual functionality of it. And that's what I feel like with their case. The case is very pretty, and it has a really nice finish. The the material on it is like a, a fabricy, but it's like a heavy fabric that doesn't like get you know doesn't absorb liquid. It's like a nice case. But the shape of the case, because it's made with fabric like that, the whole back is kind of curved. So when you put your phone down, it does that thing where it like rocks incessantly, right? It rocks for a hundred years because you set because it's not a flat surface. So that's my that's one of my obsessions in life. In in the past decade since I've had smartphones, I must have owned hundreds of phone cases. Like, I'm a big tech guy. I love smartphones. Every phone I've had, I've owned easily a dozen or more cases for it. And they range the whole gambit. I've probably spent up to 80 bucks on a case where it's like real woven carbon fiber, whatever. I've definitely paid, you know, an exorbitant amount of like a douchebag for a phone case. But also most of the ones I buy are like $10. AliExpress specials because I'm like, oh, that that one has a slightly different feature. It has a smaller bezel and a narrower camera bump, and the buttons look, and then you get it, and it's like, oh, well, the pictures weren't really accurate, were they? <laughs> it turns out this is ten dollars because uh, they don't give a shit, and it's just another silicon phone case. I've never had a good experience buying from AliExpress. <laughs> but they get you they, with the pictures. You look, and you're like, oh, the, look how this one's a little thinner. This one's 0.2 millimeters thinner, which is going to mean that the it's always a bad idea. I've always just stuck with the first phone case I've gotten, and I'm pretty sure this one's a cell helmet. And I'm pretty sure. Oh, what? Looks like an OtterBox knockoff. Yeah. Mm. Well, the only complaint I've had about this one, for my purposes, is that the back is really slidey. So, I like, if you're that. sitting it on, like, a slightly angled surface, it just will slide and disappear. Or, like, if you have directions, like, you're driving somewhere and you have directions because you're car doesn't have built-in navigation features because uh, you don't even have a car what are you bragging about yeah well i don't have any of those things <laughs> so uh if you like set your phone on your leg so you can listen to like the directions while you're driving it can like slide off your lap whereas my old case would like at least stick so i could like hear the directions uh because if you have like drinks in your cup holders there's not always a good spot for your phone especially in like older car models so it's like I guess it's gonna sit on my lap, and then it's like sliding everywhere, which is a problem. So I like set it face down on my lap. So it's just a little bit too slidey. That's the only complaint I have about this case. Otherwise, I'm pretty easy to please. Have you ever scuffed up a phone case with sandpaper to see if you could improve the grippiness level of it? No, I've just lived with it. <laughs> okay, no, yeah. Yeah, like my you, phone case into has modding your own here. cases. Like, it's oh good my case. god, like, don't I, I I exacto what knives what and straight is, edges and sandpaper. Cool. Listen. <laughs> Don't get me started on the importance like, of the perfect level of grippiness of a phone case. The I it's <sighs> I feel very strongly about this. I, 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 I detest how slippery phone cases are. If you're if your phone case, if you set your phone on a flat surface, like in a car, like you're saying, if you set it on a perfectly flat surface and it slides off there the moment the car moves or goes around a corner, F. You have failed. You have made a bad phone case. But also, in the same vein, if you make one of those silicon phone cases that's so sticky, it feels like one of those slappy hands where you, like, <laughs> yeah. stick it on the side and it's like, whoosh! You failed! Bad phone case! There's an important middle ground in terms of grippiness, and you have to achieve it. You could make an entire YouTube channel based on phone case reviews at this point. You should, man. Like, yeah. You'd be such a valuable resource to the world out there. If you're looking for a phone case that has adequate grippiness, the, one of the other things I like about this mouse phone case, it has a real wood insert on the back. Your skin oils will stay on the wood, and once you've used it for a couple weeks, it'll be the right amount of, like, oily to the touch, but not slippery to the touch it sticks to like clothing fabrics without sticking to them relentlessly and it but it's still pleasant and you can like turn it around in your hand plus it has rubber plastic sides it's not like matte finish but it's like a soft 
I have a lot of opinions about this, and I have to go buy the new MagSafe, or no, I have to go buy the new quadlock case that you just showed me, because I didn't know that that existed yet. So you know what? You did best me. You showed me a phone case I didn't know about. I didn't mean to best you. You beat me at my game! You identified it from one frame of it in camera. <laughs> How did you not? I... <laughs> I mean, the quad, the quad lock interface is pretty unmistakable. It's way bigger of a of an insert than the Peak design, and there aren't many other competitors that have the insert into the case lock design mechanism. So it's it's a unique case. I don't think people care enough about phone cases that they would know that outside of myself, but it is a unique case. That is interesting. I'm all worked up. I'm gonna like. I need to. No, I love that. I hope everyone just enjoyed Wade talking about uh, tripod nuts and me talking about cell phone cases for an hour. <laughs> no, it's incredible. That's what I wanted. That's, you see, no, that's the thing. That's why I wanted this episode because there's so many little niche things that get me so excited in my life that I, I don't even really use every day, but it's like, I love this. I have a, lo I have a love-hate relationship with DJI because mm. they're very Apple style in terms of their contained ecosystem. Them, but when they do it right, they do it so right. Wait, I'll, I swear I'll let you go. This is the DJI mobile uh, recorder system. Oh, yeah. No, those are so cool. It's all in here. You have yes. your, your, your uh, receiver interface there. It's that big. It's tiny. It's this big. Uh, you have adapters for both iPhone and a uh, USB-C. You've got two automatically connecting. Clip on microphones. You just clip on your collar or your shirt or whatever, right? And not even clip. You can do it uh, because there, there's like this, uh, what they call a dead cat mount. It, you can actually, not many people know this, but you can put it underneath your shirt with a magnet. So you don't have to have the big bulky thing oh, in there. Oh, really? And you have the dead cat. Uh, accessory here that'll prevent rubbing. It'll also prevent rubbing inside the shirt. People don't know that. Uh, it's oh. not perfect, but if you're not running and moving, it's fine. You can have it actually on the inside, you know, tucked down deep enough that you wouldn't see it down because lobs are usually mounted on the chest when you're doing like movies and stuff. Um, hmm. And because of, you can do it reverse, you can do it lower down, you can put it down to here, and then you just have this like little notch that's way less obtrusive than having a big which is easily if you have like a shirt like mine like a henley you can hide the magnet in the in the button whatever yeah. this is called in the lining or whatever like very hideable and not only is like all of this would be great uh, and it's got internal recorders, which you could like or not like with like micro SD cards, or whatever. I kind of like it being without. It's all USB C. But it comes in a freaking AirPod case that charges it as it goes. You like so. Not only do these have long batteries, you can keep it going, and it's all in one thing for a good price. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I haven't even had a yeah. chance to use it yet, but I was like, fuck yeah. No, I I saw when I saw I saw a breakdown of those, like an unboxing type video of those, and I was like, that's exactly what I wish existed in in terms of like a wireless recording setup. Since I've been needing that in term in making videos and shit, like for years and years, it is. No, those seem super cool. It's the best and it has its own bag again not sponsored by dji i would take a sponsorship from dji absolutely if you can get me your shit because holy shit it's tough to get your stuff sometimes oh my god here's a rant about dji to, to measure it all sponsor up. us but also i've been trying to buy ethan a birthday present for three years now i've been trying to buy him a drone right because i promised him a drone for a birthday three years ago that i was getting him a drone uh, like a fancy one or like a mavic pro uh, a, an Inspire, a okay, cinema that's, drone. Those are, yeah, those are enormous. Those are cool. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. So three years ago, I put in an order, and it was so back ordered that it was like gonna be three months out. And I was like, okay, no, I'm not gonna do that. Let me just try to find it. I canceled that order, and then I saw it was back ordered to everyone else, and then I forgot about it. So then the following year, actually, no, this waited a bit, and then I'm not a good friend. <laughs> so this is also not just all DJI's fault. Dude, wait till I give you my birthday wish list. Well, last year I was like, I'm finally gonna do it. The Inspire 2, I'm gonna buy it. I put in an order, and I'm like, it said, oh, in stock, available, ready. I bought the best combo. I was like, I'm gonna, Ethan's gonna get it, because I'm, I was originally the Inspire 1, and I'm like, I'm gonna get the Inspire 2, it's gonna be great. Fast forward two months, I still had not gotten it. 
I had gone back and forth with email saying like, what is going on? It says it's in stock, it's ready to ship. Back and forth, they're like, all right, it's, oh, there's uh, been some problems. They are very wishy-washy about it. Two months later, they canceled my order. They canceled Beca it? Because the Inspire 3 was gonna come out. Oh, well, they're just trying to get you to spend money on the new one. Yeah, it was like somehow they were discontinuing all of their Inspire 2, but it was like, it was another four months before the Inspire 3 came out. So it was like, they canceled it four months before, and it's like, just, if you had gotten me that, you would have gotten a big sale, and then I would have been like, oh shit, I gotta buy the Inspire 3, and then it was like, oh fuck it, so it's like, it is also a pain in the ass sometimes to buy from DJI, which I will readily admit, which is why I'm just like, DJI just get in touch with me in person, I swear I won't be mean to you like I am to all my other sponsors, and anyway. Uh, if you give us all your shit, we'll be nice to you. I, sw I swear! I swear I'll be nice! Give me your stupid thing! Alright, Wade, but sorry, I've been taking over your turn, please. No, you're good. I do have one more niche purchase that you guys have actually seen, whether you've realized it or not. My prop cigar. <laughs> That's what <laughs> this is a pretty niche purchase, and I gotta say, it's been a pain in the ass as well. I was doing a DD campaign where I was playing in Star Wars, and I had a character whose name was Damn Shun. The way he talked was like this, and he always had a cigar in his mouth. So I tried to find a good prop cigar that I could have in my mouth for like four hours at a time that wouldn't taste disgusting, wear out, break, and I have yet to find one. The cool thing about this one was it used to have metal prongs that I'm pretty sure are poisonous, but whenever they would touch your tongue, they would light up the tip of the cigar a little bit. It was like, oh, that's a cool little feature. But after like two hours of use, the back of this thing like opens up and peels off and the metal starts to taste like I'm actually being poisoned. Like there's just a flavor in my mouth that my body tells me is a red flag. It's like, this is not a flavor you should be experiencing. Get this thing out of your mouth. It's their patented lead contacts. They make better I conductivity. I don't know what it is. But I have bought no less than 20 different prop cigars, some of them being the same one because I just couldn't find other ones. So I bought like 10 of this particular one. But I have tried to find so many different prop cigars that I could leave in my mouth for like four hours for like a skit. Why don't they keep replacing it? We, or at the very least, Mark knows enough people. Couldn't you reach out to an actual prop master and ask them what they think? Who'd Probably like, could have. Because I know, so on In Space, uh, Mick just used actual cigars, which was very bold of him and kind of gross. And I think if, if he hadn't, I think he enjoys a cigar. I think he didn't mind it that much. I would not have been able to live with that. That was horrific. Um, but I'm sure that a prop person would either know a good one to buy and just tell you like, oh yeah, we'll go order this niche place, buy this. I don't know a prop person. Or they would make, Mark does. Yeah, but if there's one company harder to reach than DJI, it's Markiplier. <laughs> Damn. <Hey. laughs> <a> Savage. <laughs> Uh, minus Sorry. one points for the unnecessary roast. You know, it was probably worth it. <laughs> I don't know. That is, that is, so, so do, are there specific things that you look for when you're shopping for them, or are you, are you just buying any? I literally just want one that, I mean, having the light up feature was cool, but unnecessary. What if you just wrap it in, like, duct tape or something? I mean, I guess I could do that, but the problem is, like, you literally just sit there for three or four hours talking like this, and you have the cigar in your mouth. And it gets all saliva -y. And then, like, I try to rinse it, like, after I'm done, and I'll put it, like, next to my desk, and it's like, even sitting here for a week after rinsing is probably not very sanitary. I don't know what's growing on this. <laughs> don't wash it, just rinse it. Yeah. I don't know. Just finding a good prop. I don't, I'm not doing that campaign anymore, so I don't need it now. But it was a lot harder to find than I expected. I was like, dude, I'm sure tons of people need prop cigars for all kinds of things. There's gonna be, like, long lasting, durable prop cigar and there is not there's just a whole bunch of like three to five dollar cigars that fall apart after an hour and a half of use that's what exists you know that is fair uh, maybe i was a little too judgmental like i didn't mean to scoff because we've seen it before but that is that does fall in the qualification it's niche it's such a small thing but it's a product that you bought and you like i will grant you one point for that does that make me like negative five now uh yeah it does good counting thank you i every time you stabbed me today i felt it so i <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? Anyway, 
All right, so we've been talking a while. I'll try to wrap it up here with um, if you sure. guys have any last minute things. I could talk endlessly, but I know I'm like we can do a whole season. I don't know if we do seasons here, but we can do a whole season talking about this kind of stuff because it's our lives. I would love if you got more, like dish it out. I I have um, one. I have one. This is not a technology thing, but it's a kitchen thing. Cool thing. Can I just say uh, this won't be a long one? Coins. I could talk a lot about this. Uh, and knife I blocks this cool thing for the kitchen. That keeps my I am not safe. by any means a highly I'll trained, highly in. skilled chef person, but I'm a very enthusiastic okay. hobbyist chef. I love cooking, I love learning new stuff online and trying it in my kitchen, and, and I love having... I don't like knife sets, right? A lot of people mm -hmm. in their kitchen, you probably like buy a set of knives from, you know, the department store or whatever, and it comes in a thing, and it's all this... I don't like that. The knife sets are generally not very good quality, so I have my own knives. I have a I have a um, square bladed Japanese vegetable knife that's that's pretty nice. I have a nice uh, aided Cocoa chef's knife. knife. That's pretty good quality. Cocoa I have some good, good quality pairing knives that are like, but they're not the a set, and really so they don't fit in a in knife kitchen. block, right? They didn't really come cool. in a thing. Have, like, I have been cool searching for the longest time for a knife for, like, block that was like universal but not shitty, because there's a lot of universal knife blocks. That'll fit all your knives that are garbage. They're, they don't hold them. They're not very good. I recently found an in-the-drawer knife block that's basically just a big piece of wood with a bunch of vertical cuts in it. And you could put, like, your steak knives in there on one layer on top and then your bigger knives. And there's a, there's a cutout for your uh, honing steel. It's like the big round thing that you use. It's not a sharpener. It's a honing steel. In-the-drawer knife block. Absolute revelation for me. Super niche, not important. One, I like that the knives are not on the counter. Our son is five months old, so he's not exactly pulling things down off the counter yet. But I've always thought it was really sketchy to just have a big block of incredibly dangerous pointy things sitting out in the open on the counter if you have kids around. Kids are stupid. They might touch, pull, knock over, whatever. In the drawer, discreet, doesn't take up counter space. If you have low cabinets like we have, out my longer knives, you wouldn't, you couldn't pull them out of the top of the block without like moving it out from under the cabinet. Solves a lot of problems. In the drawer knife block. I don't know if this is a new technology or not. If it's been around forever, I just discovered it. Fantastic. I love it. My new favorite kitchen thing. I love hearing about this stuff. I really do. Because it's like, it doesn't just apply to tech. Like, that is kind of just like this thing that solves problems. Because all these things are the pursuit of problem solving. It's like, there's a problem and you solve it. Like, this solves a lot of problems. The lenses that I was talking about solves a lot of problems. That knife block solves problems. This cigar solves problems. These aren't just things to gush about. There's things to gush about because you had a problem that was so aggravating beforehand. My little standard. Six dollars and Your little disky, adjusty, platey thingies. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really do appreciate that. Wade, do you have any last minute ones to get in? I, don't, I was going to go grab them. In the other room, I've got cables. And, and then, I don't like, remember which cables like, they were. But at one point, I was trying to change around how, like, my Synology, which is an external storage bin, for those of you that don't know, I've got, like, terabytes of, like, videos and stuff stored. I was trying to change around how they were, like, plugged in because I've got two computers in my office, one that Dana remote desktops into to edit videos and my computer that I'm using right now, and they're both plugged in with Ethernet cables to the Synology. And I had to get, like, an Ethernet extender thing, so I had more Ethernet ports on the back of one of my computers. At some point, I needed a different kind of cable. I needed, like, an extender for, like, a USB or USB-C or something. I needed, like, a male-female thing or whatever it was. And it, like, didn't exist. All of these stores I went to online, they were like, yeah, we got them in stock. And I showed up, and they are like, I've never heard. Like, someone that doesn't work in that department that usually is just like, I unlock cabinets so you can get the Lion King game out. Like, that's their extent of knowledge of the electronics section. I showed them this cable I needed. They were like, is this to charge your phone? And it's like, no, it's not. So I went online and I tried to, like, find the cable there. But being not tech savvy and being in this industry is kind of a terrible combination, which is me. Uh, it took me forever to even figure out what I was actually looking for. But, like, some of these, like, little cables that are almost impossible to find. I forget what it was. It was, like, a, a female to female or male to male, like, extender thing for something. Or just that little, like, Ethernet extra ethernet ports thing was more of a pain in the ass than I expected it to be. But there's so many little things like that that throughout the year I don't even think about. It's just something I'm like, oh, I need to find a way to do this thing. So I'll go and I'll order like four or five different products and then I'll like sometimes forget and keep the ones I don't use, but sometimes I'll remember and I'll return the ones that are like, ah, this one didn't quite work. But it's just like I'll throw just 
money at the problem, hoping something sticks that can fix it. Because there's just so many weird niche things you don't think about ever needing to do that just come up sometimes where it's like, how do I plug this in? There's not a port for it. I gotta make one. I love a perfect cable though. Oh my gosh, dude. I have, I got recently for my car, eight inch long, USB A to lightning cables, but the lightning cable is a is a 90 degree right angle, so it plugs in in one, and then it's like the exact right length to plug my phone in, and then put it in the spot on my dashboard in my car where the phone sits. Oh, you don't have extra cable and it fits. Oh. There's no cable flopping around. There's no pull. It's the exact cable that I needed, and I found it, and I was like, it's even a left hand turn 90 degree thing. Like it's perfect. I love when that happens. But cables are a real pain in the ass sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I went through this. The whole reason that my hard drive situation is so tumultuous is because of the nightmare that is the USB standard. And I've talked about this before already. <laughs> this was, um, we talked about this last time, right? <laughs> yeah. But but trying to figure that in trying to figure that out, I've learned so much about cables, yeah, you do. hard drive arrays. It's fun. Like it's aggravating, but sometimes you need that aggravation to kick you in the ass to go learn something new and i i love that problem yeah. solving and if it takes a, a few bad purchases which i've made a few bad purchases and there's a few things that you realize like oh it's not me that's dumb it's these companies that are dumb but there are some that do and it really makes it a lot better so like our sponsors yes our sponsors will solve all of your problems they have exactly the right thing and it does what they say it does i'm really hoping earlier in the episode when i was like oh you'll know when we sponsored i'm really hoping it cuts to immediately like <laughs> We're sponsored by. <laughs> I don't know in my head. I'm, if that happened, then hell yeah. If it didn't, then well, at least you guys know I had a dream. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank you guys for your enlightening discussions. If you guys have any niche things that you gush about. This was close. Any more points? Uh, no, I think we've tallied up all the points we possibly could. Uh, let oh, me do okay. a oh, oh, gosh. count here. Um, so it's a close one. Uh, <laughs> but sure with an 11-point lead, Bob is the winner! So what's the gimmick, y'all? Did you all agree the most unfair episode ever, or did he pay you, or how did this happen? He did this on his own. We didn't discuss anything, Adam. It was fair. It was just a fair episode, Wade. Am I being punished for the subreddit, like, not siding with you? I've been in your exact position in other perfectly fair episodes. I don't know what you're so. I don't know what you're moaning about. I don't, right do you now. remember the episode like five episodes ago when I participated and I had to like. Oh, I've got to figure out the rule. If I figure out the rule, I win. And I found out at the end of the episode, the fucking coin flip at the beginning meant you won and I didn't. I don't remember that. I don't know. That was fair. Yeah, that was fair. The fact that it didn't feel fair doesn't mean that it wasn't actually fair. Oh, okay. So my it bad, was a yeah. coin flip. It was an even chance. Uh, I could flip a. I could flip a coin again, Wade. If you feel like it's super unfair. Bob, you have won the fairest, fairest of fair episodes we've ever fairly done. Is if Wade is gonna whinge it up like this? If Wade is gonna moan and moan, Mark. I will submit to a coin flip ending to this episode. <laughs> All right, I will okay. forestall my points. No. I will call it a draw at the end, and I will say, I will uh, you flip flip the thing and let Wade call it in the air. I mean, no. I could not possibly Bob, lose just take the win. Me, another coin flip. Let me find. I found a very basic uh, coin flipping thing, so you guys can. This is online. Oh, I want my. I want. I mean, I want our lens cap. So here is no no more lens caps. So this is uh, justflipacoin.com, I think. Ooh, make the coin purple. Purple? All right, that feels fair. I like that. Yeah, and it's already right. on heads, which means that like, what are the odds of rolling heads twice in a row? I mean, I guess it's fifty-fifty per flip. But I'm gonna go with heads if I'm calling it. I guess. <laughs> call it in the air, which isn't a thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Call it in the air. All right. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Three. Two, one, one. Call. heads. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Bob, you had an 11 point lead. Why would you let it come down to this? Why? I was so confident that there's no way you the shouldn't. streak could continue. <laughs> How many is that in a row? I don't, know. I don't know how fast it flipped for you, Mark, but it was like three frames of flip for me. <laughs> I thought it was done on tails. I, I on my screen it was all up, flip, up, 
Tails? Heads! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's like it, it's like it reversed. Yeah, it's just the, it's fine. Oh, it was just man. taunting me. <laughs> you know what? This is why I brought a sandwich. I, uh, I, I, I volunteered for this, and I, my hubris has led us here, so... I feel like this episode was designed for me to lose. I can't believe you found a way to lose. I can't understand what happened. <laughs> How many flips is that in a row? That's like 13 or 14 or some shit. We're between 10 and 14, somewhere in that range. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm sorry, Bob. I really, I thought the secret name to this was Bob wins this episode. That's what I was like gonna. No, that should be as. the title, a hundred percent. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah, and then Bob wins this episode. Yeah, that's that's what it's called. I should have won. I should have shut my hole. I should not have tried to satisfy Wade's whining. I should have let him be sad and salty. Hundred percent. You've let me do that several times now. I was so sure, like, there's no way, and it'll be a glorious, uh, like, oh my I might like, beyond even being mad. Now I'm just disappointed in myself. I do. I feel like I've. You should be. You, you did this to you. I, you I am doing this to my own self now. I am the new weight of this podcast. I'm trying to lose, and I'm succeeding. If you had called it, would you have called tails or heads? No, I would have called heads. I've only. I believe I've only called heads. Or mostly called. I pretty much always call heads. So it's never heads yeah. when you call it, it's always heads when I call it. Funny how that works out. It's so crazy that that happens like that. <sighs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. Wade, do you have a winner speech? Called it. Bob, loser speech? I, more than any other time so far, I did this to myself. I should have just taken the win. I'm not mad at me. I'm just disappointed in me. The viewers slash listeners are going to think that we're rigging this and it's a bit. And it would be funny even if we were doing that. It's not. It's just not even fixed. It just keeps happening because I keep inviting the coin flip back into the, my life. I keep saying yes, even though I should say no. And I did it. I did it. To, I did it to my own self. You gotta win one of them. Like literally, this has to that's, end. Well, that's the thing. Right now, I'm at this point where I'm like, I have to keep doing it because I have to win eventually. But if I keep allowing the coin flip to decide, I'm apparently never gonna win. What's the percentage? Let's say it's been 12. What's the percentage of losing 12 straight coin flips? Very low. Uh. I, Mandy made fun of me last time because apparently you could find this answer very easily by just multiplying this thing by itself. You know what? Whatever. To do that in your head, yeah. 0. 0.00024 percent or they don't. I don't know. They don't say percent. I mean, that's a, that's like a likelihood, right? That's that's yeah. So what? Are, so it's probably. <sighs> what would that make it like less than? Even if you move that over, that's point oh two four percent. That's terrible. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching and or listening. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful time. Gush about the things that you love, and don't place anything of value on a coin flip. If your name is Bob. If Wade uh, goes to a casino in the next, like, month, I think he's gonna walk Dude. away a billionaire. <laughs> I'm gonna call you guys and be like, I'm on a Bob streak. <laughs> you need to bring me with you to the casino, and somehow we need to play a game against each other, but where you also win money from the house. That's yeah. the thing. What Whatever Bob says, bet the opposite. Uh, we were playing blackjack, and I'm like, double down! And Wade is like, ooh, fold, or whatever blackjack <laughs> things. Man, I had a royal flush, but fold, <laughs> Bob says I should go. Well, thank you again, everyone. Uh, be sure to check out store.distractiblepodcast.com. I'm sure there's new stuff that's in stock. There's not when I look, but when you guys go, maybe there will be. It'll be there. One day. It'll Any be day there. now. Any day now. Uh, and follow, follow the podcast for more amazing goodness. Um, and tell your friends. And have a good day. Take care. Doodles. Podcast out. Uh, Bob. Change is hard. Bob, 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 Bob. You had... You had one job. And that was to win this episode. You had one fucking job. Take the win, you motherfucker. Don't bet on a coin toss. You'll always lose for some reason. God, alright, well...
Uh, I guess Bob doesn't win this episode. Plot twist. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, they went far in, in Jedi Survivor. Um, I defeated another um, bounty hunter. Now I'm going to go do another one, but I'm going to take a break. My eyes are tired, and i got to put my... um. You want to know the weird thing about it is? So, I bought this Samsung Galaxy Watch, right? It's supposed to be really good, right? Really good Samsung Galaxy Watch, right? I wanted a smartwatch for a long time to not only count how many steps I did, but to keep my see what my heart rate is like and stuff like that. Make sure I like eat enough calories for the day, stuff like that. So I looked online for Galaxy watches that are good, and I saw this Galaxy watch. Right? It was cool. I had this watch for I think three months now and like month one I was getting a rash on my wrist I didn't know what it was it was just a rash and I thought I thought if I switched arms it would calm down it did now we mark um, number two it was coming back again and a little bit bigger and I'm like worried a bit but I'm not too worried then this month like a couple of days ago, like a, maybe a week ago, it spread to the other side of my arm, my rash. So a couple of days ago, I called Kaiser, who is like the medical like hospital near where I live, to like say what the fuck is going on with my arm, and sh they said that I might be allergic to my watch. So I'm like, how can I be allergic to my watch? I don't know, maybe it's the band I'm using, maybe it's the metallic stuff, but it's not like directly underneath the sensor, it's just where the wristband is, like where the black wristband lays, you know? So now I gotta take ointment two times a day until it's gone. But the thing is, a couple nights ago, it was itching, so I scratched it and I irritated it. And that's what happened. So... Yeah, and I gotta take care of that. So I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> you don't have to worry about me, but I'm fine. But what bit? What? What? Wade, congratulations, I guess, on winning. Bob, what did you do? <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys later. It's been N-T-A-D-D-D-Y. I don't know. Bob, you should not take it that way.